I think it matters in a number of ways. Uh, the report provides a very, very deep insight into the real value of manufacturing, not just the production aspects, but the extended value. Everything else that the manufacturing enables, including the social aspect, the social capital. We talk very openly about the economic aspects, but the social aspects, the, uh, the skills, the development, the R&D, the R&T cycles to so the universities, the education system. So it's a very comprehensive insight. The likes of it I've not seen before. I mean, there have been reports published on technology in different countries, on, on markets, on consumerism, on sustainability, but I've never seen one that combines these together and tries to articulate a vision for future drivers and enablers and the potential for competitive advantage and how UK, UK industry and government can take advantage of that. In my work in particular, we see companies developing different strategies. There's a very organized technology focus, so there are companies who are doing research and bringing new products to market that use significantly less energy. The obvious world that that is seen by uh, you know, the average citizen is cars. So we're seeing ordinary uh, petrol and diesel engine cars getting more efficient. We're seeing new versions of cars coming through and that's the technologies that they're bringing into their products. Those same companies are using different technologies in their factories and different ideas in their factories to reduce the energy it takes to make a car. Well, I think the key recommendations for government derive from the fact that we've taken a long-term view. And one of the things about the long-term is that the technologies that are going to drive the future of manufacturing are going to impose ever more complex uh, requirements to understand how industrial sectors in the UK can capture value from them. And so that means one of the first things for government is to think very carefully about how it develops the necessary statistics, the necessary metrics, to help us understand this process. And it's going to vary a lot between technologies and sectors. So that's one of the first major challenges and requirements. The second is that uh, in thinking about policy, it has to be targeted very effectively at the needs of specific sectors and technologies. So that requires quite a deep and a granular knowledge uh, that uh, the government has to develop about designing and shaping its policy. And that in turn has a very further important implication, which is it needs to develop ways of integrating its own knowledge with knowledge which is embedded out in the science base and in particular in industry and it, that will extend beyond, beyond the UK. Now all of those things taken together mean quite a demand on government to develop its own capacity to ask the right questions, absorb the information and use its relationships with business to craft policies.